Hey everyone, welcome to the EV show. Today we have a 1951 Chevy pickup truck that EV West converted about five years ago. Today we're going to check it out and see how it's holding up. Let's go get into it. So what a gorgeous truck, huh? I mean, we get a lot of feedback and, you know, back in the day when we did this uh, and converted it in the shop, we had some pictures up on social media and whatnot. We got a lot of inquiries and uh, we kind of shy away from trucks. You know, if you've been planning a conversion, you know that a heavier vehicle was a little bit more difficult, a little tougher, a little more expensive to convert. And so we, we kind of focus on the smaller sports cars, but um, have a lot of love for the trucks. And especially in this application, the owner's not looking to tow anything. He's not going to put huge loads in the bed or anything. He just wanted something that him and his family could drive around town, have a little bit of soul, still be stylish and sustainable. And uh, he hit it right on the head. So the focus of a build like this is really just to build a lot of reliability back into the vehicle. Typically you have a truck like this shows up really rusty and in a non-working condition because you know maybe there was an engine failure or a breakdown or something like that and they generally just sit around and by electrifying them you know this truck is is basically been constantly going out on the road for the last five years and the customer is a local in fact we'd see him at local uh, car shows electric car events uh, we'd pass each other going to work sometimes and give the friendly ev wave and honk and all that and uh, it's just great to see this thing around and really it gives us a lot of pride to see it um, you know, five years later, and I had a little debrief with the owner earlier today, and he's had absolutely no issues whatsoever with the driveline. So um, really, you know, good news to report there. Now, the, the truck, because it's a vintage truck, has been a work in progress for him. He's done a lot of upgrades, you know, now that he's driving it a whole bunch. And coincidentally, he told me that his wife's driving it now, too, which I think is just fantastic. So he's done some drivability upgrades. He, he lowered the truck overall from its initial ride height. He swapped out the original bias ply tires to radials, and he actually got about a 15% range increase with that. We'll get into some range numbers later, but he did get a, a pretty substantial increase. Um, he's softened up the springs a little bit. He's changed, um, oh, he did some stuff with the steering. A few things to just make it really drivable. And driving it out here, it was really fun to drive. It was a much, much different drive when we first brought the truck in. It sat at a much higher uh, ride height um, and it was just a little bit more quirky. So uh, that's what tends to happen with the electric vehicles. You tend to drive them a lot, and then all of a sudden issues that you didn't think were gonna be a big deal, you kinda wanna button them up because uh, you're gonna be spending a lot of time in the car. So uh, he started the vehicle. He had the original three-speed uh, Saginaw transmission, the three on the tree, actually. And um, we, we thought that it wouldn't work. We, we recommended that he'd wanna swap it out, but we went and had to go at it anyways. It turns out the straight cut gears were just really, really loud, uh, very inefficient. And on top of that, uh, his gear ratios were just kind of off. There was big gaps between them that didn't work out, didn't translate well for the motor set. Uh, so he has upgraded it with a, a mid 70s to 80s Chevy pickup truck transmission, four speed in there now. Um, so he's just got a four, four on the floor. And uh, that really, you know, made it a lot more drivable for him, gave him a little bit better performance. And I think the big issue there was the newer transmission was synchronized. So with a non-synchronized three on the tree, he's got all this torque and the, the truck moves pretty good. But when he would go to shift, there'd be a little bit of a delay in the shift time. And, you know, if you miss a gear and a non-synchronized, you get a nasty grind. And you can hear it because it's so quiet. <laughs> so he's, uh, he's got about 25,000 miles on the truck now. Um, over the past five years. So he's putting, he doesn't commute it very far. He works in the same neighborhood that he kind of lives at and telecommutes a little bit too. So it's, it is his main vehicle, but we don't put a lot of, he doesn't put a lot of miles on it. So 
um, that's pretty good. But the reliability factor has been there for him. Uh, I was talking to him about uh, longer road trips. His, he says his wife takes it downtown, um, downtown San Diego and back and stuff like that. And just has a lot of uh, confidence in the truck and, you know, um, really feels it's a reliable driver and feels safe enough to put his wife and his kid and his family in, in it. So, um, and that's really what we're trying to do. So, um, getting a little bit into the details, we'll get into the drive line a little bit. It's got a pair of uh, AC35s up front, so it's got the twin twin rotor uh, motor up front, and uh, we're just running into a standard transmission. We have um, 42 kilowatt hours of the Tesla Smart battery in it, and with that 42 kilowatt hour, he's getting about um, about 130 miles range. On the previous uh, transmission and tires, he was just a little bit over 100, so he got about a 15-20% gain by going from uh, the bias supply tire to the radial tire. So I think that was the biggest increase for him. And then just all around, he really mentioned the noise. And when we were driving it early on with the three-speed Saginaw, um, you know, you can really hear that, that transmission whine. So if you guys are doing, if you're looking at doing a conversion like this and you got a lot of like vintage um, driveline parts, especially the transmission, you know, look at upgrading it to a more modern transmission, maybe a T56 or something like this from the, from the mid 70s and 80s. Um, but you'll you'll go you'll have a lot more efficient vehicle, be a lot easier to drive. The ambient noise while you're driving will be much better, and I think you'll just have better drivability out of your vehicle. So definitely worth that kind of upgrade before you start. Uh, everything else the owner did before he brought it in, he was really smart there. He uh, you know this was um, I'm told it had more rust than anything <laughs> on it, and uh, when it came to us, it was this beautiful Chevy red, and. Um, and you know he's all done all the restoration work and the interior work and we always recommend that always best to do this kind of work first because when you go through the installation process of the electric vehicle system you kind of want stuff to be in its final resting spot and then of course there's the human factor when you finish it up you don't want it to go off to a paint shop for another six months you know typically once the electric drives in people want to get out there and start driving them around. So we really highly recommend doing all your interior work and all the paint work and all the restoration work ahead of time. All right, so up under the hood here, we've got uh, twin inverters for our twin AC35 HPVS motor down below there. We have the dual shaft version, and what we did is we put a six and a half inch pulley on the front, a six rib, and we're actually running his air conditioning compressor off this. So the truck does have an uh, air conditioning system, which is really nice. And we run it off the pulley. They're a little bit more quiet than the electric pump version. And, um, and this was just real conducive to it. We had, the, we had the room up front. We had the motor with the spare uh, shaft on it. So it was just easier and actually a little bit more affordable to go with a pulley-driven uh, air conditioning compressor, which is totally fine to do. We sell um, both of them, the regular pulley type and the electric type for air conditioning. So that's a really nice feature in a vintage truck like this. Up front here, we've got the dual 2.5 kilowatt chargers. So, uh, and they're switchable, so he can turn down his charge rate when he's charging on a daily basis at home, take it a little bit more easy on the batteries. When he's out on the road, he's got an option switch, can flip that and charge at a full five kilowatt. And uh, that's about it. You can see it's pretty sparse up here, pretty clean. Um, the original motor, you can see there's a, a detent in the firewall there. I mean, the original motor was really up high and it really upset the, the center of gravity on the vehicle. It was um, so up high in front when he went around turns, there was a lot of body roll, a lot of brake dive, um, and it just kind of just had a lot of weight in all the wrong spots. Now with the electric vehicle conversion, you know, our, all of our motor weight is essentially down here kind of uh, in line with the crank and his entire battery pack is under the rear bed, 42 kilowatt hours. I think that comes in uh, it's about a 600 pound pack or something under the bed. So he's got some weight in the vehicle, but it's all very low at a very low center of gravity. And um, I'd argue that it, it improves the drivability of it. The added weight gives it a little bit more planted feeling and uh, having that low center of gravity when you go into the turn, there's no body roll or anything like that. And you can feel it. It, it definitely gives you confidence in driving it. Um, so that's it under here. We got over there, we've got one of our EV West throttle position sensors. He's using his original metal uh, throttle pedal so we didn't want to get rid of that so we just did a push rod through the floor and then you can see our sensor there and uh, pretty simple and clean this is probably a, uh, one of the better conversions to look at for the parts and pieces because everything's so unobstructed and just 
uh, wide open out here. I think the only item I didn't touch on is we've got our small little cooler down there and that's running into our Curtis chill plates and it's cooling both inverters. Let's uh, move on to other parts of the truck. So this is one of these funny old trucks that the gas tank is typically behind the rear seat and I don't think I've ever sat in one of these that didn't have at least some small gas leak. And so the cabs of these pickup trucks, if you've ever owned one, they traditionally just always smell like gasoline. Um, so that's probably the, the most rewarding part of this conversion is getting the old factory gas tank out. The customer went in and um, put Dynamat in the whole entire cab, which was really nice once we had all the components out. And then we were able to go in and actually repurpose the filler neck for his charge port here. So that's kind of nice retaining a, a little bit of that old vintagey look. Uh, it's a little tougher because the, the charge um, plug is a little bit bigger in diameter, but you know, the aesthetic is kind of there that uh, we're repurposing the original fill neck for the fuel. Gas tank. All right, as part of the gas tank delete kit, put a battery pack in. That's our 42 kilowatt hour Tesla battery, uh, about 600 pounds, laying pretty low you know, right in the frame rails and real easy installation. You know, we just uh, remove the bed, pull the bed off, get a nice secure installation of the battery pack into the frame rails and reinstall the bed. And, uh, you know, the pickup trucks format's great for that. Any body, body on frame vehicle will be kind of uh, that same sort of methodology and work out pretty easy for you. And uh, gotta love his license plate too, <laughs> my 51 EV, love it. Look at this interior. Oh my God, this thing is so beautiful. Uh, so many cool little details in here. Uh, he kept everything factory. We've got all the analog gauges. We just got little pie, uh, side pods down here for our voltage and motor information. Stuff that's a little bit more important that you need to know. Um, the air conditioning that we mentioned earlier, he's got an evaporator system. I believe it's from Vintage Air, but he mounted it behind the radiator grill. I'm sorry, radio grill here. And we absolutely love it. His gauges are right here, uh, temperature control and fan speed, and uh, just perfect because who uses a mono speaker in the dash anymore? Um, we've got, I mean, that's about it. We've got the, the manual transmission. We'll go over that a little bit when we're driving it because uh, it's a ton of fun. Um, but pretty straightforward. You know, we want to really respect the car. We want to really respect the truck. We're not here to load it up with a bunch of stuff. It would be, you know, a catastrophe to like cut the dash and try and fashion in an aftermarket gauge. As it is, typically these types of gauges we like to hide. We either put them in the glove box or somewhere out of the way. But, you know, when you're driving, you kind of need to take a peek, see where your voltage is at, see where your state of charge is at. Um, so that's a nice compromise there. So overall, just a really well put together interior on the truck. Very classic, very original. Nothing looks real out of place, you know, not too gadgety on the electronics. And uh, just, you know, again, an absolute joy to drive. All right, so that's a lot of the technical details and some background information, a little bit of story on the truck. Uh, hope to fill in all the details you guys are looking for. If there's anything that you're interested in, you know, because these are, these are good projects to get information out of, to kind of, it's real useful in planning your project. And uh, if there's anything that we didn't cover, you know, go ahead and let us know, you know, put it in the comments down below and uh, we'll see if we can get, you know, get all your questions answered and just make sure you really kind of know what it takes to build an EV truck with a modern DIY conversion kit. Uh, absolutely love this thing. So let's go jump in it and go take it for a drive. So one of the things that we get asked about a lot is manual transmissions in electric vehicles. And so I just wanted to show you, since the electric motor is never gonna stall on us, we don't have to worry about revving the motor or keeping input into the throttle. And we don't even need to use the clutch when engaging the gear because nothing's rotating at the moment. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put this transmission in the second gear, just throw it down like that. My foot's on the brake, I'm just simply gonna release the brake and get into the gas just like a golf cart and we just cruise away just like that. So real nice and smooth, you don't have to use the clutch. If we get into a situation where I need to do a three point turn and maybe back up or something like that, come to a complete stop, not using the clutch again, just take the gear shift, throw it in reverse and just give it some gas. Now this is difficult, I did this here on a hill because this is one of the most difficult things to do is to slip a clutch on a hill. And I've got control where I can let the truck go forward, I can bring the truck backwards. It's just like a golf cart. So it really just depends on what I'm doing with my throttle input at the time.
So I mentioned earlier, it's got the HPVS twin AC35 motor in it. Really like that motor, man. It's, uh, it's basically two motors in one case. And the neat thing about that is you can put twin inverters on it. And so it's a really, really affordable way to get good power. Each one of the inverters puts out about 75 kilowatt, you know, close to 100 horsepower. So between the two of them, uh, it's just about 200 horsepower. And I think our torque figure is around 150 foot pounds. So, uh, you know, very capable unit and uh, a little bit better figures than the original straight six that came out of it. You know, it's situations like this that the electric just shines. It's a busy road. I got to pull out and uh, it's kind of a blind turn down here and I just don't have to worry about stalling the truck. I don't have to worry about slipping the clutch or really revving the motor high to get a little bit more power out of it. I'm just going to look down there and just get into it. And this guy's going to boogie. Woo! <laughs> God, this thing is a hoot to drive. Most fun five window I've ever driven. So I'm just sitting here. I'm having fun driving this. This is tough to review. As I find myself just sitting here, just driving it, really enjoying myself. I was just having a conversation with our videographer about how well this thing handles by lowering it a little bit. Having that low center of gravity and a real nice tire. You can go into a turn at a pretty good clip and it uh, it hugs the road pretty good. It, it handles better than any vintage truck of this era uh, that I've ever driven, really. I might have to uh, offer the customer a trade for a week, maybe let them drive my Volkswagen truck and I drive a little American truck for a week and mix it up, man. I'm really liking this. <laughs> big old bench seat, big old American style. Love it. All right. Well, that'll wrap our 51 Chevy five window. I uh, certainly love days like this. I love driving cars that uh, we have a little bit of history with, and there's nothing cooler than an electric truck, really. And uh, you can tell why everybody's trying so hard to build electric trucks right now, because it really is, it, it, there's just no other word other than cool. Uh, but thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Michael Breen with The EV Show. We had a fantastic time sharing our truck with you, and we'll see you next time. I'm going to go drive this thing some more. You. I promised I'd never do this. Ring the bell. Smash the like button, hit subscribe. Don't judge me. <laughs>